and first of all, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. But uh, you can go to lamarzuli.net, uh, lamarzuli.net. Our GoFundMe page is up there. And I just want to thank those who have contributed uh, in this incredible time um, of duress and displacement. It's it's very strange. I've lived there since 1978, so it was home. Um, wow. We took our, our I, t I brought my bride back to the place. We brought our children back from the hospital and raised them there. And uh, with a lot of improvements I did with these two hands or these two hands. So you know I I can't really recreate it. Um, it would take two to three years to get a building permit, another year and a half to build. So we're looking at four years. I'd be, uh, I'd be 72 years old then. And I just feel like my focus should be on making films, writing books, doing the research. And uh, getting a permit in Los Angeles County is, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's a monumental task. And we've heard all sorts of horror stories. Uh, and I just, I don't have the, I don't have the heart for it to be honest with you. And in, on top of all, that's all the flesh. But the spirit, I think, honestly, is leading us out of California um, to more than likely uh, Oklahoma City near Gary Stearman and Bob Ulrich. Um, I'm in touch with Bob pretty much every day anyway. And, and Gary and I chat uh, one, one, you know, every, every couple of weeks or whatever. So we're actually looking at houses there and, and ready to relocate. Uh, California pays the highest taxes in the country, state taxes. Um, it's, it's obviously liberal to the cows come home. Um, they've ruined the state, in my opinion. Sanctuary cities, influx of Ill illegal aliens. That has impacted everything, every aspect. MS-13 uh, in L.A. proper. It's just, it's unbelievable. People have no idea what it's like. You can't go anywhere on the weekends uh, on Pacific Coast Highway in the summertime because it, it's just bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. 101 freeway, it, it's, it's hellacious. So, you know, there's a lot I love about the state. I love the climate, and that's what lured me here. I love the mild winters. I love running um, on, on, you know, on the ocean or you know, next to the ocean. And all that um, is wonderful, but it's like this now. And now with the house being lost, um, we are going to relocate. So lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net will take you right to our website. Uh, books are there, new DVDs out on the Mound Builders, and, of course, the GoFundMe page. And thanks for those of you who are going to do that in advance. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited about this interview, guys, and uh, because those of you that know me already, I don't sensationalize and I don't go down uh, weird roads, but uh, more and more as we have been uh, seeing things that is going on, we've shared with you guys even that uh, we believe that the Vatican may eventually offer their own version of the, of the Messiah as an Antichrist, uh, that I believe may end up being a and as they would say, an alien, a devil, a Nephilim. And so as we have ventured into this, seeing the different scriptures, things that apply even in the book of Jude, uh, you can find it even in Peter's writings in the Bible, uh, let alone from the book of Enoch and other sources that we look at. Uh, there's definitely something very serious going on. And L.A. Marzulli, I was watching when he did his disclosure video on the UFOs, uh, showing Sean Hannity and how Sean Hannity was one of the few that was willing to address the situation. And unfortunately, the world, especially the ministers and all these churches that have the largest audiences to reach the masses, as L.A. pointed out in his own video there, uh, they're not doing it. And I can tell you something, guys, and I haven't said this to you as of yet, but I'm going to say it because I'm here with L.A. right now and give him the floor. But uh, the intelligence friends that I have in Israel recently wrote me and they said, Steve, he says, you know, look, the ones that are really controlling the whole world right now are those with the 9,000 IQ. Let your imagination do the wandering. L.A., please take it away. Let's, let's, let's discuss what you have written about uh, and so people can get a foothold of what's really going on. Well, again, thanks for having me on, but, you know, last, it's basically a year ago, pretty much right now, one year ago, 2017, in December, on the Tucker Carlson show, uh, and, you, and, you know, Tucker Carlson is a lot of different guests on from all different persuasions, left, right, in between, whatever, and uh, he, he started off and says, you know, UFOs used to be th uh, thought of as, or, or, or designated to the tinfoil half brigade conspiracy, conspiracy uh, people. Uh, maybe that shouldn't be so. And, and then he, that was his introduction. And then he says, Commander David Fravor is a former F-18 pilot who had an encounter. So he brings on Fravor, so it's, it's Tucker Carlson here and Commander Fravor, two screens, but then it shifts to three screens. 
why Framer is talking about an encounter that he had um, in, I think it was 20, uh, 2005, right around in there. So it's been a while. And he's flying, and, and he has contact with, can only be described as a UFO. I mean, visual contact, and he gets it on radar and, on, and, and films the thing. So it's, it's Sucker Carlson here, Commander Fravor there, and right next to Fravor is what was at one time classified footage of the UFO. So they're talking, and the, the interview lasts typical five minutes on Tucker Carlson. You know, the, the Amer American people have a very short attention span. <laughs> click, <laughs> click, I'm getting boring, click. So, um, you know, and this was, this was riveting because Tucker Carlson said, well, where do you think this thing is from? What do you think this was? And Fravor looks right at the camera and says, from another world. That's disclosure. And, and yes. what people don't realize is how does someone like Commander David Fravor wind up on Tucker Carlson's show in the first place? This guy doesn't have a book, doesn't have a blog, doesn't have a video to sell. I mean, he's essentially a non-entity. No one knows who Commander David Fravor is with all due respect. They do now because he was on Tucker Carlson's show. But before that, he wasn't, you know, he was just this non-entity that comes on, you know, probably has a great service record, an F-18 pilot, you know, smart guy, was had the gift of gab, could art, wasn't camera shy, looked good on camera, and he articulated what he saw. So he was probably handpicked, at least at some level, to break this. The question is, and I, and I drilled down into this in the book and also when I'm speaking publicly, who calls up the producers of Tucker Carlson and says, hey, we want this guy on Fox News primetime, because that's what Tucker is, Prime time to talk about UFO disclosure, and I real I, I was just I was I was flabbergasted when I saw this, speechless. I went, oh my gosh, talking to my wife, Peggy, this is disclosure. It just happened. It's not soft disclosure. This is disclosure. I mean, this is an F-18 pilot with classified film now declassified on, you know, it's not on George Norrie's coast to coast. It's on Fox News, Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I figured my phone would blow up, my email would blow up, flatline. I had one email from a pastor, did you see this? So from that came the quote, the church, the modern church, has a morbid propensity toward ambivalence in regard to the UFO phenomenon. And frankly, it does. It doesn't care. And yet this is the coming great deception. Because this, you see, it, it's, it's complex and it gets into what the neo-Darwinists are looking at. But Darwinism, classic Darwinism, states that all this just kind of evolved over billions of years randomly. The neo-Darwinists, now that they've with Watson and Crick's discovery of a deoxyribonucleic acid, a double helix of life, the DNA molecular structure, neo-Darwinists realize that not so fast, that it's a, this just didn't happen by chance. There has to be a designer someplace. Even when Ben Stein sits down with um, one of the premier evolutionist Darwinist of our time and, and says, you know, how do you think it happened? And uh, uh, Richard Dawkins says, well, it could have happened something like this. And basically what he's saying, the neo Darwinists believe, that somewhere out there in a galaxy far, far away, a, a race of highly evolved extraterrestrials must have created us somehow and then seeded it through the galaxies. It found uh, a place on Earth and, and everything in other words, we were seen here by extraterrestrials. That's what the neo-Darwinists are looking for, um, and that's what they will embrace. So when they show up, and they're already here, I mean, they're already in integrating with our intelligence uh, communities and, and everything else. I mean, I, I firmly believe that. Uh, the presidents are always kept in the dark because they're not, they, they're not needed to be in the loop. Um, does the Vatican know? More than likely. But this all ties back into... The idea that when they do show up, that's an ultimate game changer. And the $64,000 question is, is the church still here? And we can argue about that till the cows come home. We won't know. All I know is that from that December uh, um, interview with, with, with on Tucker Carlson with David Fravor, until now, about every two to four weeks on Tucker Carlson, there's been another person come on talking about the UFO phenomenon. All different people, from Nick Pope, Nick Pope to Leslie Kahn, or Keen rather. These are people that maybe your listeners don't know, but these are all people that are um, plugged into the UFO community and been researching it for decades. So it's um, 
they spill the beans, the church, the church dithers and is asleep. Well, you know, you know, the thing is, LA, is they're grooming the people. They're grooming them and getting them ready for what's coming, what they know very well is coming. And uh, that kind of reminds me of when Barry Chamish, uh, he had written about the giants yeah. already being here as well. Uh, my mother's last husband, right before she died, he had worked at Area 51. Uh, and I remember him telling me, uh, the technology, how that they were getting it. He didn't go into details where the technology was coming from. He says, but what you are seeing is nothing compared to what they really have. Um, and we actually, my wife interviewed uh, uh, Harold Kautz Villa, the German scientist that had disclosed to us, Now I've actually never said this before on Israeli News Live, but he told us how that they were trying to get him involved in different projects, including the CERN project. And uh, he talked about the demonic side of this, how this is opening a portal uh, from another world. He spoke about um, uh, how that when he was not willing to go along with it because he's concerned about just how demonic this is, they took him and he actually met alien entities uh, that they were working with. And then he shared with us, and this is something we've actually never even published. There's part of the interview we never published because he asked us not to publish certain aspects for his own safety. But I can tell you, besides meeting those, he spoke to us about uh, the different governments and different alien entities working with different governments on the planet. And this is one reason why there's infighting amongst themselves over who's going to control what, according to what he shared with us. Uh, go ahead, L.A. We had a uh, whistleblower in, in our film, actually two whistleblowers, in the film, in their own words, UFOs are real. And that's, of course, a shameless plug, but it's available on the website. It's an hour and 37 minutes long, and everybody in the film is a born-again spiritual Christian that, guess what, has had encounters of the first, second, third, and fourth kind. This man had been taken, was being groomed, high IQ, um, and was being groomed and um, by the brass. And one night he found himself after a, uh, a couple hours in a bar getting absolutely liquored up uh, with this, you know, high officer, I don't know the guy's rank, but they were out in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden these lights came on in the distance and they, he found himself basically in an underground base. At which point he saw, and when he, when he says this, uh, I have to blot out his face and disguise his voice because he, he wants to keep it anonymous. He showed me his discharge papers. He showed me all of his uh, credentials that would, you know, and, and, and the question, he's not after money or notoriety or anything else, but he saw uh, the grays. He saw what can only be described as the tall whites who were kind of running everything. And military servicemen were working side by side. Well, this just is another whistleblower like Bob Lazar in the 90s who came out talking about Area 51, stating exactly the same thing. There was another gentleman who came up to me, once again anonymous, anonymously at a conference, and stated that his friend, who was agency, part of the agency at one point, and uh, his son was, you know, he was retired. Now his son was working in the agency. And they were watching a football game, and his son just blurted out. He couldn't, couldn't hold it in anymore and just said, I I'm working with extraterrestrials. And so this father told my contact, who then told me. And in the film, I go, look, this is all secondhand information. I can't vet it. You be the judge. And, and so there's a caveat. I'm just not going with it and trying to be sensationalistic. I'm saying, this is what we've heard, and I'm reporting back to you. I think it's valid. There's no way to vet it. But um, here it is, and, and do with it what you will. So I included it in the film with that caveat, of course, uh, b before we ran the interviews, which in my opinion, it just it, it corroborates other stories that we've heard. So I, I, I believe that, that this quid pro quo, giving a technology for access to the population, which happened right after the Roswell, the Eisenhower years, that whole thing, um, that it, it all, look, it, it's coming down, it really is. And the fact that UFOs move with impunity over every city, every country on this planet should tell us exactly 
what's really going on here. That we our fastest planes can't can't match these things at all. And David Fravor said that. He said when the thing took off, when the UFO that he was witnessing had eye contact and he was flying less than a mile away from it, he said off. He said it shot off like like a bullet out of a gun. Fifty miles, it was out of sight. That's that's clipping. That's clipping. And so that's what we've we've heard this from Dennis in on, on the film in their own words, who was a former pilot who talked about the same thing. This this object came in from fifty miles away in a blink of an eye. It it tracked his plane. They were flying from um, Lima, Peru to Mexico City. They were over the ocean and the visibility was clear. They were above cloud at, at fifty miles and this thing came in. It it left these two huge beams. They could see windows in the craft and then it shot away. And, and left the scene again at, 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 at 50 miles away, boom, gone in the twinkling of an eye. So it's, we've had too many, way too many reports. And now that it's finally on Tucker Carlson, you would think that the church would begin to address it. Uh, unfortunately, for the most part, they're not. And they do it to their own peril. Because what's coming, this is the coming great deception. And, and as I talked about earlier, it, the springboard to it is the Darwinian theory. There is no God, you were seated here, neo darwinists There is no God, but we were created by a race of extraterrestrials. The Elohim are really extraterrestrials, which is what the New Ages have been saying for the last 30 years. So it's everything is, is pointed in that direction. Right. And then right. we get we get into Second Thessalonians where it says, because they did not believe the truth, God sends them strong delusion. What is the truth? That Yeshua spoke everything into existence, and without him, nothing that was made was not made. So that is the truth. So we, they exchanged a lie with the truth. And Darwinism is the lie. That's exactly right. And, you know, the... The odd thing is, a lot of when you're, when you're saying this, one thing I think that might hit home for people as well is a good friend of mine, Gary Lowry, he actually spoke, you know, he, he shared with me a lot about being abducted by aliens. But the one thing that always stood out in his testimony was Gary said that when he was there, he said he was abducted more than once, but the first time he could never recall it. He said his daughter, actually, who was very small, could tell vividly details about these grays, these gray looking, hideous looking individuals that had taken them from their home. But the second time when he goes, the one thing that Gary said, he, he talked about being more than one type of being that was there, but he said they kept telling him, we are sorry for what we did, but we are your brothers. And Gary said the only thing you could figure is that they're repenting to him for the uh, fallen angels cohabitating with the women on the earth and uh, it, But he said he told them you're not my brother at all and they said but we are you have no idea so there again it's almost like when we read the book of Enoch, you can see they're constantly trying to repent. They go to Enoch, trying to get Enoch to intercede on their behalf, uh, you know, for their sons, the Nephilim that are born on the earth, but they can find no repentance uh, for their soul, you know, which to me is a little bit different than Cain and Abel, because Cain, you know, he was told that if he did well, he would be received. But the Nephilim, zero L.A. Zero. And then you see in the book of Jude, the same thing. Jude, he, what is it? he's talking about Nephilim, whether we want to face it or not, because he said these that crept in unaware, and where did they creep into? Into the church itself. He said they crept in unaware. These men who were uh, foreordained to this condem condemnation, which clearly goes back to the Nephilim, the lineage of the Nephilim. So... Maybe that's one reason why, L.A., we're not seeing this coming from pulpits and stuff. Maybe there's just too much infiltration. What's your thought? You know, there's always been infiltration in the church. I just think that, that many pastors, unfortunately, um, are never trained in spiritual warfare. Many pastors have no idea uh, of Genesis 3.15, which, in my opinion, sets up the rest of the show. Without Genesis 3.15, um, an understanding of it, when you get to Genesis 6, you're clueless. When you get to Sodom, and, when you get the Tower of Babel and Nimrod, you don't understand what's going on there. And why the judgment isn't the same, why, why it's slightly altered. Then when we get to Abraham and the five kings, what's going on with that? Finally, Sodom and Gomorrah. What's happening with, with all that? Um, Abraham is tapped out. From your seed will become the Messiah. We, we know that. Then when we finally get to the Promised Land, or when we get... When, when, when Yeshua, and of course I believe it's the pre-incarnate Christ, Messiah, um, when he says, 
when the anointed one tells Abraham, hey, you're going to be a great nation, and from you all the nations of the earth will be blessed, but you're going to go down to Egypt for 400 years until the sin of the Amorites comes into its fullness. What? What are we looking at there? And of course, what we realize is the Amorites are a Nephilim tribe, and, and this is what people don't, and this is exactly the scripture that Richard Dawkins points to, that the God of the Old Testament is a genocidal, homicidal, maniacal, crazed individual that calls for the slaughter of men, women, and children. And he's right, unless you plug in the Nephilim, because what's in the promised land are Nephilim tribes. And I wrote about this in the Cosmic Chess Match. It's move, counter move, move, counter move. There's a reason why they're there. They know that Father, you know, Yehovah wants that, he wants that land. They know that. So they position their forces. I mean, it's strategy. We're in a cosmic war, a cosmic chess match. And so what's the mandate? Go out and slay them all, men, women, children, animals, everything, because everything is corrupted. The seed is corrupted. And what's amazing is at Jericho, when the walls go down, and remember, the Israelites aren't doing squat, except blowing trumpets, blowing, blowing the shofar. They're not doing anything. When they see that, when the Nephilim that are behind those walls, when they see that, they know the jig's up. They know this is the real God, and word gets out real quick. And this, of course, leads to the diaspora of the Nephilim tribes, where they scatter all over the earth and continue to work their mischief, including what's all over the Americas, which is why we did the mysterious Mound Builders film. But yeah, I mean, it's very complex. Genesis 3, all that to get back to Genesis 3.15. Serpent, the Nakash, the Shining One, is in the garden. Adam and Eve are over here. And, you know, the serpent, what amazes me, and of course it's a three-hour study, Eve is talking to this thing. She's not afraid of it. She's talking to it. Right. There's a relationship there. And slowly he leads her. It's just not... I don't believe it's a one visit. I believe it's a visit that happened over weeks, months, perhaps years. And and this is what he, he does the same thing to us. He plants a seed, and we kind of go to it and back. And pretty soon, you know, we're way down the road, and we don't even realize how we got there. That's how deceitful he is, and what a liar he is. So you got the, the shining one, the serpent here, Adam and Eve here, Yahovah, or I would say the pre-incarnate Yeshua. Yes. Is in the, that's Not right. In my opinion, it's Yeshua that's there, and he goes, he points to the serpent and goes, Your seed, your seed, the serpent's seed, will be at war and enmity with the seed of the woman. He, talking about Messiah, Mashiach, will come and, and crush your head. You, the serpent, will bruise his heel. That's the whole Bible. The seed of the serpent is a reality. The seed of the woman is a reality. The seed of the woman manifests thousands of years later in Mashiach, in Yeshua. But the seed of a serpent, three chapters later, manifests in the Nephilim, which then spread out through the earth, tried to corrupt the genome, because if he can do that, it's checkmate, and he almost succeeds, except for eight people. Well, you know, uh, I have to tell you, L.A., I, I, had, I, I had for the longest time thought nobody else ever had caught the part about the, the death of the Nephilim, because that was an argument I had made that to many people that were always saying that, oh, wow, gosh, you know, you can't, you know, God is this murderous God. I said, you don't understand. I said, he was dealing with Nephilim when, when Joshua and Caleb came into the land, uh, which I'd never saw the part about the Amorites where you were talking about there, how that this was even back in Egypt. Although, when yeah. you're dealing with Nof and Tophanes, Nof in the Arabic uh, uh, belief, Nof was the Nephilim as well. So the, the, this tribe of Nof is actually uh, these fallen uh, children of the fallen angels. And so I saw that, and I saw that as, uh, you know, uh, Yehovah was saying to us, don't do as they did. They, they sent their children through the fire to Molech, and it's literally in Hebrew, it is, it's, a, it's a veil, and I think that's what they had down at Antarctica, is a veil that was there, and this is where they crossed over. That's when they bring these kids back, create this other race. Uh, and, of course, when he sent them in to kill them, men, women, and children, it's because it's, they're, they're not children of God. They're not from Adam's descendants, which, yes, and, and, and I haven't shared this with you guys yet. I'll go into this deeper in, in, on another video later, but I'll just share it in here because I, I'm just uh, really interested in what L.A. is saying. But just last night, the Holy Spirit revealing to me 
that the whole issue when Yeshua was saying to the to the Pharisees, you are of your father the devil, his work shall do. And they say, but well, you say that we are devils, and I'm just paraphrasing, but it says, we, you know, we have Abraham to our father. And of course he says, okay, yeah, Abraham was your father. He agrees with that. All right, but why did he say that they were their father, the devil? They were Nephilim, and I think this is why, even to this day, or in modern days, the the the, the Israel has changed the law, even in the right of return, that you can only return if your mother is a Jew. Now, because it used to never be that way, that's not biblical. I mean, I believe you're a Jew, whether it's your mother or father. I'm not against that. But I think the reason they're doing that is because the way they brought this demonic race in and continue to bring it in is through the rape of true Israelite women to bring forth that Nephilim race. And therefore, that's what gives them a title to hold as Jews. So anyway, LA, that's a bombshell. So we'll see how, how well I do with that. <laughs> continue on continue on well i mean the whole idea of this ufo disclosure um there i, I copied from another book um uh, which i had written an interview that i did uh and and so that's cobbled into that because i, I thought the interview was like really pertinent uh, as to what you know what's going on with with abductions and what one of the reasons why I wrote the book, not only was Tucker Carlson, but because we kept hearing from Christians who were being abducted, being taken, and were saying, in Jesus' name, stop, wasn't stopping it. And this, this next part of our little chat here will be very troubling to some people, but I spoke about this at the last few conferences of the year when I was talking about the new book. And... While it's very troubling, um, I think it's reality. And it's this, that Christians are being abducted. They are evoking the name of Jesus. And it's not stopping the abductions the way it used to do 20 or 30, 40 years ago. Um, it's, no, it's not. Some, you know, some Christians are getting a slight victory. But there, there are testimonies in the book. I'll just give you a couple of them. Uh, a woman is riding in a car with a friend. They're both Christians. Suddenly, there's a flash of light. That's all she remembers. The next, the next thing she awakens, she's in the car, driving the wrong way, 200 miles from where she was. There's four hours of missing time. Four wow. hours of missing mm. time. An elder in a church goes to bed at night. All of a sudden, he realizes he's, he's paralyzed. He's being pulled off the bed. The exterior wall of the house is like six feet away from the bed. He's now floating over the, over the floor next to the wall. He knows he's going to get sucked out through the wall. He knows you can't do that, but that's what's going to happen because these entities can manipulate space, time, matter, and energy in ways that defy our physics. He finally is able to choke out Jesus' help, and boom, it comes back. He's like a rubber band, so he breaks it. But, but he calls me the next day. And I, I grow this guy. You're not off in the bushes. He's not watching porn. He's not having an adulterous affair. I mean, he's, he's a straight shooter. He's an elder in the church. And he's deeply troubled. Why is this happening to me? A woman who has been taken all of her life, all of her life, has been a Christian, talks about uh, her entire family when she was a little girl and her neighbor's family being marched out by the graves to a ship in a field across the street. And now she's much older She's got children of her own, and the children are being abducted. How does that work? And she's a Christian. And she'll say, in the name of Jesus, stop. And they just look at her. And the reason why I think it's going on, this is conjecture on my part. But we are in a, you mentioned Moloch earlier, and I think that was serendipitous on your part, or I should say leading from the Holy Spirit is more like it. But we read in, in, you know, in the Tanakh the sacrificing of the children to Moloch and, and Shamash and all of this stuff. And we're, we're, we recoil at that and say, surely, you know, these people, how could they possibly do something? In, in the modern world, we are living in a time which is completely unprecedented. And that's because since Roe v. Wade, there are now one billion, with a B, one billion. So the people in America, there's 300 million, okay? People in the United States, 
That's wiping out everybody in the United States over three times to get to one billion. That's what you're looking at. The entire population of the United States is obliterated three times over in order to get to one billion people. Mm -hmm. And so one billion people have been slaughtered in the abortion mills since Roe v. Wade. And what I've been showing is there's a pathologist that sent me uh, pictures. She worked at a hospital as a pathologist. And so once a year, this is why she became a Christian. So her first year she's interning and one of the other doctors there, pathologists go, well, the next week is baby, par baby puzzle week. She goes, baby puzzle week? What do you mean? You'll find out. So the next week come and they bring down all these little vials, little boxes, plastic boxes with lids on them that you can see through. And she looks in and this, I show two pictures. I show one of the vials, one of these little containers, it's not a vial, a container with an arm floating in it. And I show all pictures from her, her gloved hand with a little tiny hand on it, like this. Wow. Uh, severed from the arm, just a hand. And what the baby puzzles were, the, the, the babies in the mother's womb were torn apart. That's how they killed them. Right. And Americans right. don't understand what's going on. And these people who, you know, a woman's right to choose and all this other stuff, they are flipping clueless. And when you sit there and you start showing the pictures, it's indefensible. And anybody who can defend that, you know, can't defend it. Because mm -hmm. you sit there and you go, this is, this is so barbaric, I can't even believe it. So I show two pictures. The life is in the blood. Abel's, again, you're serendipitous on your part, Abel's blood cries out to me from the ground. One billion, we are in, it has created an iron dome over this planet because it's a Luciferian satanic sacrifice. Our prayers are hitting that. Boom, boom, boom. We're under a different paradigm. The rules have changed, which is why Christians are being abducted. Can we break through it? Of course we can break through it. We have the authority in Yeshua. I'm not, I'm not talking hopelessness, but people don't know how to break through, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, the churches corporately have, what, eight seconds of prayer a week? Corporately? Yeah. You know, why, why not target the crack house? Why not target the abortion clinic? Why not target the psychic? Why not, you know, uh, target um, the drug traffic on the week or a million other things? You know, can you imagine if the church did that every Sunday? how cities would be taken back because we're told, you know, the prayers of righteous men and women avail with much. I inserted women because that's who he's, that's who he's talking about. That's right. So it's, you know, if, can you imagine if a church got together and stopped playing church instead of reading the morning announcements, who cares about that? We spent 15 or 20 minutes corporately praying after worship when the, when the gates of, you know, when, when the doorway to the heavenlies is open anyway, right after worship. Wait on the Spirit of a living God and then go in with prayer and supplication, repenting of the nation and our sins, and then targeting those things, lifting up people who are sick. Have the elders come up and anoint, anoint you know, the sick. I mean, yeah, you can do that on another, another day if you want to. I mean, I get that. But we don't do it. And that's why the church is anemic, and that's why my people perish for lack of knowledge, in my opinion. You know, that you, you, there couldn't have been a better way to express this L.A., um, because this is where this is where the problem is. We have gone away completely uh, from prayer life, and this is why the church is in such a tremendous shape that it is. And as you mentioned, the 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 babies that are being murdered, even Israel. Think of this. Is I mean, I've always said to people, I shouldn't say always. I used to be more pro-Zionist, unfortunately, but by the grace of God, He opened my eyes. Uh, you know that. If you're going to stand with Israel, stand with those that are believing in Yeshua in Israel because they're the ones that are persecuted like it was 2,000 years ago. Uh, and yet the secular government, we keep cheering the secular government of Israel on right now, but people forget. We've now had 17 gay parades in the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, we have changed the abortion law in Israel to, to match that of the Talmud, which is, allows the, the abortion of a nine-month child in the womb up to the last day you know it, rem it, re it reminds me la of even during the holocaust you know the biggest perpetrator of the death of our own people were the elite zionist jews that were going to create the state when they said uh it was it was weissman at the kastner trial states 
Well, we had to turn a deaf ear because we needed human sacrifices in order to stay at the table when they divide the rest of the world up. I mean, this is the demonic side of what's going on. And uh, the government of Israel, although there may be some decent people in there, we're just as secular. We're doing no different than the United States government is doing, uh, you know, slaughtering these kids. And it kind of goes back, LA, to the vision that I had. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever even shared this with I think maybe I did share one part of this one time. You know, I seen this being that would change from a human to look like a lizard. And then they were abducting children and they would take them to this room and they didn't show me it happening, but they were, I knew for some reason, I knew by an understanding, they were devouring these children, yeah. eating them. And then we wonder about all the, you know, besides the abortion, which I've always, I felt like the abortion when it came in back in the, uh, what was it, late 60s or something like that when they made it legalized, this was a type of the same thing with in the days of Moses, in the days of Yeshua, when, they, when, the, when the government went after the children, trying to stop the anointed from coming forth, the word from coming forth. It's the same thing today. The system is set up like it was all those years ago. They're trying to kill and stop the anointed from coming forth so that they can have their own demonic race, I suppose. So at any rate, Ellie, I know your time is, is precious and I don't want to hold you too much longer, but uh, if you can say some closing comments or if you've got more to say, we'll continue on. You just let me know. Well, I mean, there's, there's a whole chapter in the book on, on cattle mutilations from Chuck Zukowski. It's a Q&A, and Chuck's been doing this for, for decades. He's sort of the go-to guy. Uh, Linda Moulton has another one that, that put it on the map, but, you know, Chuck's in the field, and, and that's why I chose him, and he was gracious enough to uh, discuss it. Uh, openly and and write about it. This has been going on for decades. Cattle are taken; they are mutilated. Uh, um, sex organs are cored out. Ovum is taken. Um, eyeballs are, are taken out. Excised with surgical precision. It is a strange harvest to use Linda Moulton Howard words, and it's ongoing and it continues even today. Something is going on, and it's not good. And the American people, the church, needs to understand that this is the coming great deception. And that's why I talk about it in the book, uh, UFO Disclosure of a 70-Year-Old Cover-Up Exposed. Um, we also talk about Roswell in the book, uh, and this is, I, I have a, a colleagues who disagree with me on this, that Roswell was a weather balloon. Look, I've got too many witnesses that I've talked to that were there. Jesse Marcel Jr., that's as close to the event as you can get. His father came back and showed him the wreckage, and it was not of this world. And to think that his father who was the, uh, the 509th um, uh, bomber group's intelligence officer, would somehow mistake wreckage from a downed UFO as a weather balloon, insults the man's intelligence. And so it was, it was, it was a patsy, it was a cover story, the whole deal. Um, I've got, I remember talking to a retired Air Force general, and I softened them up with a bunch of softball questions for about 15 or 20 minutes, and without changing my, my cadence or body position, I just said, well, what was it like when you saw the retrieved bodies from the Roswell 1947 crash? This guy's body language went all off the charts. Now, that's, you know, that's anecdotal. I get it. But, you know, we, we had Colonel Hill's testimony in, in the film, In Their Own Words, UFOs Are Real. And Colonel Hill uh, was OSS and was flown into Roswell. And it was basically a deathbed confession. Uh, given to Car Jim and Carol Rankin, uh, deathbed confession that he handled uh, the wreckage. He saw the wreckage. It was shipped to Wright Patterson, which corroborates everybody's story. Just one more story from another witness. And deathbed confession, he, he tried to make contact with these entities. They had six fingers, not five. Six fingers. Mm. They had a one-piece jumpsuit, you know, the big heads, the big black almond eyes. I mean, he saw them. And it was a deathbed confession. And he was... A month later, he passed away, and when he was doing it, he was greatly troubled. When Carolyn and Jim talk about it, he's like, when they asked him, he kind of hung his head like this and let out a deep sigh and sort of committed himself to finally wipe the slate clean. And so he went on the record, and they came on the record. So, look, in my opinion, Roswell was a real deal. It was yes. a cover-up, and that's why I think that uh, maybe – one of the next, you know, they did all the soft disclosure, soft disclosure on Tucker Carlson, like we talked about at the beginning of the show. So 
what, what's next? I mean, they've had a parade of people come on Tucker Carlson continually talking about the so-called extraterrestrial presence. It would not surprise me in the least if they trotted out some retired general, CIA, Pentagon official, whatever, with actual footage from Roswell and, and spill the beans there. I mm. mean, that would be huge. You know yes. what the American people yes. would go up there? It'd, it'd be like this, flatline. Flatline, the that's American right. community would be jumping up and down. Most people could care less. And the reason for this is we are so anesthetized with Star Wars, with Star Trek, and, and, you know, every every other sci-fi movie that when the real thing actually happens, we're desensitized to it. It's not like it was in the 30s with Orson Welles. So the book's available on the website, lamarsulli.net. Arm yourself. Get prepared to what's coming. My gosh, this is a life-changing event. Well, and it's, it's available right on the site. You know, L.A., I, I have to say to you, and, and this is something I'm really prayerfully looking at, is when Paul so, talks about putting on the full armor of God, and then he goes in, especially the helmet of salvation, uh, I have a feeling there's more to it than meets the eye. Uh, I really do. I think that he was trying to give us a message for what would come in this, this time that we're living in now, and no doubt what they dealt with then. I mean, this is, you know, we're, we, UFOs, alien, I mean, you go back to the Egyptian times, hieroglyphics, it's all there always. There's something they knew, and I think he was saying a little bit more than what we give credit for. I concur. So, thank you so much, L.A., for being Thanks, on. Steve, appreciate it. L.A. Marzuli .net, is that right? .net, that's correct. L.A. .net, it's on the screen below as you watch this video. Check it out. Uh, and, of course, in the description.